From 1901 to 1959, the United States and Cuba had close relations due to the U.S. having tight control and economic interest on the island. After the Spanish-American War, Cuba became a republic, with sugar being its primary industry. During this era, Cuba was run by dictators such as Machado and later Batista, who allowed American businesses, corruption, and crime on the island. Cuba grew economically due to an increase in tourism from the United States during the Prohibition era. This would all change in 1959, when Castro and his revolutionary army, after six years of guerrilla warfare, gained control of Cuba. Castro was very unpopular in the US. He was portrayed as an undemocratic, bloodthirsty communist leader. This hate increased as Castro nationalized Cuba's oil, which was previously owned by American companies. America also feared the Cuban Revolution would cause a domino effect and spread communism into Latin American countries. America's first plan was to get rid of Castro via assassination. These are some ways that the CIA tried to assassinate Castro. An exploding cigar, exploding seashell, poison pills, poison pen, and the Mafia. These all failed, as did the other 600 assassination attempts on Castro. While doing this, America also had many propaganda campaigns in Cuba to incite hatred towards Castro and his government. After many failed assassination attempts on Castro, President Eisenhower ordered the CIA to train and arm a force of Cuban exiles to attack Cuba. The CIA recruited the best agents, many of them who had worked on the 1954 Guatemala coup. This was the plan the CIA came up with. The CIA would send a group of trained Cuban exiles to set up a guerrilla base on the island. The CIA believed that months of propaganda would inspire the people to join the revolt against Castro and his government, which would be funded by the USA. The invasion was to begin on April 1961. Brigade 2506, which consisted of 1,400 Cuban exiles trained by the United States, planned on launching an amphibious attack from Nicaragua to the Bay of Pigs, located southeast of the island. The brigade would be accompanied by paratroopers who would interfere with Cuban transport and supply to ease the invasion. On the 15th of April 1961, eight American bombers disguised as Cuban planes attacked Castro's airfields, missing many of the targets. A second airstrike had to be cancelled as photos of the repainted aircraft became available to the public, and Kennedy didn't want to commit any American troops to the invasion. Two days after the bombing, Brigade 2506 landed at the beaches and were immediately attacked by Cuban revolutionaries. Cuban planes provided the defending troops critical air support and also were able to sink two American supply ships. At this point, America realized that it had underestimated the strength of Cuba's forces and government, as not only was the invasion easily repelled, but the propaganda didn't work as the Cuban population didn't show any support. The failure of the Bay of Pigs invasion was a big humiliation for JFK and made Castro's legitimacy and support grow inside of Cuba. After his heroic defense, Castro now felt threatened that another American-funded invasion or coup could happen. This made Cuba look for an ally, someone who could defend them against the United States. This ally was 10,000 kilometers away, and its name was the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. This worried the United States government and JFK who were shocked to find out that the USSR and Cuba had secretly set nuclear weapons 90 miles away from the United States. Maggie. 